Hi there, it's Tim Golf 5 Tango Mike back for another video. Now, I've had a couple of questions or a couple of statements really, comments if you like, on a couple of my recent videos on vertical antennas. Uh, first of all, we had Jeremy KN6FWT. I really wish I could put up a 40 meter half wave as a uh, vertical antenna. And also James, James Lawhead, can you use an N-fed antenna in a vertical configuration? Well, the uh, first of all, the answer to the second question is yes, you can. And yeah, in, in reply to the first uh, one there from Jeremy, I believe, uh, I've often wondered uh, what that would be like too. But of course, uh, 20 meters is an awfully long uh, way up and supporting that can be a problem. Now, uh, one person who has tried that is James and his Amateur Radio UK channel. I'll put a link to that and also to the video in question in the description for this video. And what he did, he took up uh, the same antenna, 20 meter long N-fed half wave, uh, fed it with a 49 to one, I put the other end of the antenna, the far end of the wire, attached to a kite and even up to a SOTA summit and had a bit of fun with it. And I thought, well, I wonder what that antenna looks like in terms of its performance on modelling. Now, uh, before anybody jumps up and down and has a little tantrum about antenna modelling, I'm fully aware it's not the real world, but it does have its place in terms of giving you a baseline performance for antennas. And of course, when you take an antenna out to the uh, to the wilds and to a portable site like a, I don't know, like a top of a hill or by the seaside or somewhere, where there's very little clutter, then we get a much truer idea of its performance. And this is for a, a portable version, of course. So let's uh, see what it looks like. Let's pretend we've got this antenna up on, on a nice kite and it's a very calm day. Well, not too calm a day. <laughs> Don't even too calm, do we? But we've got it up fairly straight as a vertical. And let's see how she performs. So uh, a couple of nights ago, I went on MMA, MMANA, uh, filmed what I, uh, what I discovered, and uh, let's show you what I found. The first thing we're going to do then is to uh, draw the uh, 20 meter long, 66 foot N fed half wave. We're doing MMA and I've got two windows open so we can compare these different antennas. Okay, so on the left hand side, I'll do this and we're just going to go to draw this. I'll make this a bit big to start with. And where are we? Here we go. So we'll just draw about 20 meters. There we go. Okay, and we'll go to view. And we'll just add a uh, source to the bottom. Oops. There we are. Now, MMANA doesn't, uh, won't be very good at SWR here because we're just putting off the ground. So about half a meter off the ground, as you can see there, it's about, what's that in real world? It's about a foot and a half, isn't it? And we'll make it out of copper wire. Fair enough, real ground. Okay, so first of all, what does it look like on 7.15? That's a half wave, don't forget. Typical halfway performance look. Uh, it's a vertical, so this will be all the way around. So a nice pattern there. If we go to five degrees off the horizon, we've got a gain of minus five, which is fine. If we go to 10 degrees, minus 1.4 and 15. We're gonna do five, 10 and 15 for now. And that gives us ooh, minus 0 0.3. So remember sort of minus five at five degrees to start with. Okay, that's the half wave there. Now, let's try it on 20 meters. So don't forget, with an N-fed half wave fed with 66, sorry, with a 49 to one or a 64 to one, <coughs> excuse me, or a 56 to one, we should get uh, not only the half wave frequency, but also the harmonics, we should get 20, 15, and 10. Let's have a look at 20 meters. We'll put it on 14150. We'll start it up. Again, don't worry too much about the SWR. Far field plot. Bit of a difference there, isn't there? So that's now a full wave. Okay, let's have a look. So let's draw here on the right hand side a half wave. Don't forget the one we just drawn on, the first one we just drawn now is a full wave antenna. Okay, so where are we? Draw a 10 meter long antenna. There we go, that's fine. And we need to add a source to that. So we're feeding it at the bottom. That's how it looks. Okay, and then we'll try it. So yeah, and the material copper wire. But again, this is half a meter off the ground, same height as we're feeding it on as a, as a full wave there. Okay, so let's have a look. Five degrees off the horizon as a full wave. What have we got? Uh, minus 8.5. Now that's worse than the fourth. Okay, that's Actually, let's put that aside. Minus 8.5. So there's a full wave antenna as a vertical, 20 meters, minus 
uh, let's try it as a half wave. Minus five. So we're minus, we're three and a half dB down as a full wave at five degrees. Let's try 10 degrees. Minus 4.5 as a full wave, as a half wave. Minus 1.4, about three dB. All right. Uh, 15 degrees, so get some dx coming in there as a full wave, minus two, and as a half wave, minus 0 0.1. So we're, we're closing the gap, we're still a couple of dB down. All right, let's try maybe with some of the really low angles. We get dx coming in, let's say two or three degrees. Let's try three degrees as a full wave, minus 11.9. As a half wave, minus 8.5. Okay, we're about 3 dB down, aren't we? So we're half an S unit down, which sometimes can make the difference. So we're 3 dB down as a full wave compared to a half wave. Hmm. Okay, right, let's get back to our 66 foot antenna again, our 20 meter long antenna. And this time, let's have a look at it on 15 meters. Now on 15, it's about one and a half wavelengths long. So 21.2, far field, mm, that's a crazy one, isn't it? And I tell you what, just for completeness, I'm just going to change this to a 15 meter half wave uh, along the way. So we'll just change it, to, I think it's about 6.6.8 .6 meters, something like that, isn't it? 21.2, start, far field. Okay. So let's have a look at the halfway first of all. Five degrees off the horizon on 15 meters, fed half a meter above the ground. Uh, minus 4.6. So it's slightly better than the 20 meter one, if you remember, because half meter off the ground is a bigger fraction of a wavelength on 15 than it is on 20. So the antenna is slightly higher. So height is might. Only about half a dB, but there's a difference. So minus 4.6. Now, as a one and a half wavelength, what's it like then at five degrees? Minus 5.1. So in the real world, there's no difference. Half a dB. Okay, that's competitive. Interesting. Let's try the half wave at 10 degrees. Minus one. Let's try the one and a half wavelength at 10 degrees. Minus 4.7. So we slip back a bit. Okay, I've got a feeling we're going to encounter some horrific figures here in a second. Let's try the half wave at 15 degrees off the horizon. 0.3 dB. Let's try the one and a half wavelength. Oh, minus 10.4. Okay, you can see, look, we're getting a bit of a null. And oh my goody aunt, look at 20 degrees off the horizon. That's about minus 30 dB. Okay, so interestingly though, about five degrees is as good. I wonder what it's like at a sharper angle. Let's try three degree takeoff on both and see which one wins. So the half wave at three degrees is minus 8.1, minus 7.9 on a one and a half wavelength. So actually at five degrees and below, it does okay on 15 meters compared to the half wave but it begins to suffer at around near it gets to 10 degrees takeoff. So you, you work some DX with this antenna, no doubt about it. Some Maybe some long haul stuff if the band's open. Um, but you will miss out on a bit because at 10 degrees and above, it's a bit of a dog compared to the uh, compared to the, the half wave version. Okay, finally, let's look at 10 meters. That's our final band. So let's go back to the long antenna. We'll have, see what it's like on 28 and a half megahertz. Interesting far field plot again there. And again, just for completeness, what we'll do, we'll change this to a half wave on 10. Uh, we'll do it on 28 and a half. There we go. Right. Again, similar pattern. So let's try five degrees. Let's look at the half wave first of all. It should be a nice antenna actually now because it's uh, half waves on 10 work really well. Minus 4.5, okay. Let's check it as a two, this is now a two wavelength antenna on the long N fed half wave. Minus 4.1. So it actually has a slight advantage on the longer antenna, but there might be a caveat to that. We'll look at that in a minute. But minus 4.1, minus 
Reasonable. Let's try the end fed half wave at 10 degrees. Minus 0.8. Let's try the longer one. Minus 2.3. We're one and a half down. Okay. Um, 15 degrees as the half wave. Minus 0 0.4. 15 degrees as the longer antenna. Okay, minus 0 0.9. It's, it's not doing too badly, is it, really? So, actually, on 10 meters, it's kind of holding its own. Um, what if it's like at the very low angle? 3 degrees off the horizon. Minus 6.9. And we'll check against the half wave. Minus 7.9. So actually, again, a bit like the 15 meter version, really, it even seems slightly better. It slightly beats the end fed half wave as a two wave, has a dip at 10 degrees, not by much, but maybe at one and a half dB and comes back up again at 15. So this 66 foot, 20 meter long end fed half wave, put on a kite and fly it up. Now I know with a kite, you're going to go like that. It's not going to be a perfectly straight antenna, but you know, it gives you an indication, doesn't it? It'll do very nicely as, a, as of course on 40 meters, especially of course for longer, longer contacts, but still probably do quite well when the skip is running for shorter contacts as well. Maybe not as good as a low dipole, but it'll be fine. Um, 10 meters. Nice. It's okay. 15. Okay. For the, for the lower angle stuff. Um, suffers a bit above five degrees, but okay. And on 20, it's funny if 20 is actually the, the disappointment here because it's consistently about three dB worse off than the half wave version. So there we are. Pretty interesting stuff. I didn't realize there was such a difference between 20 and 10 meters in terms of the performance. Quite interesting. Now, one other thing to show you actually, now we've got it on, on 10 meters. If we have a look at, first of all, the half wave, and if we view it, we can see here that we've got the current distribution. I'll just zoom this in a bit. So we can see, look, with a, with a normal half wave, it's voltage fed at the end, the current's in the middle. We've got that traditional uh, current maximum halfway up. Right. If we look at it as a, um, as a two wave antenna, look at the difference. So we've got a little bit, a few more nulls as well as lobes. We've got four main lobes and we've got the nulls in between. So it can be a little bit hit and miss. Um, but bottom line is, I thought it would be um, more of an issue on 10 meters than it was. Quite interesting. So there you go. Works pretty well, doesn't it? Quite surprised by how much of a difference there is between 20 and 10 meters. As a two wavelength antenna, it has some useful gain. Uh, on 20 meters, a bit of a disappointment. And on 15 at the very low angles, it'll do a good job for you. Interesting antenna, a bit of fun. And uh, maybe as a laugh, you could try something similar yourself one day. Or, of course, find a nice tall pine tree to do the uh, do the uh, the holding up for you for the antenna. So that, that could be interesting. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you fancy watching another one, there'll be one coming up shortly on your screen to try. And you can click and subscribe as well. That'd be lovely. 7-3. We'll catch you again on another one. Bye-bye.